everybody welcome back to the channel as you can tell by the title today we are doing a sew along and let me slide over here for Butterick 6675 this is a beautiful wrap dress pattern that I have decided to use as my holiday Christmas dress um, and so yeah let's um, go ahead and talk a little bit about the pattern then we'll jump right on into the uh, sew along so for part one of this video and do remember for every uh, part there's only two parts to this sew along um, I in the first pinned comment down below you will have timestamps so if you just want to skip around um, to different parts of the video check the pinned comment down below and you can just skip to that particular section so there are only two parts for this sew along today is part one um, again for Butterick 6675 this is view a that I am showing you um, as part of the sew along so there is the flounce as you can tell here it is double sided I will go over all of that um, in the video as part of the sew along and so part one we will be talking about fabric what this beautiful beautiful fabric is uh, part and um, also measurements um, a muslin fit I'll show you what I did for my muslin fit I will be tracing I'll talk about that a little bit in the sew along as well and we will also be doing French seams so I will just let you go ahead and jump right in stay tuned for part two which will be tomorrow which is the um, actual sewing from beginning to end and then if you are interested or perhaps you're not interested in a full sew along and you want to pass pattern review of this particular pattern stay tuned for Wednesday there will be a full pattern review for Butterick 6675 all right enjoy and if you have any comments or questions please leave them down in the description box down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can see you in the next video okay so let's get started make sure that you have your pattern we are doing Butterick 6675 um, this is the display number but it is Butterick 6675 which comes with a couple of options here they have um, view A view C um, I'll turn it over in the back in a moment so you can see the line drawing but I want you to just see the two different options you have one is looks like it will fall slightly below the knee and this one is um, definitely below the knee and then has that little asymmetrical nice little hem going on there um, you also have the option of adding the flounce or not having a flounce um, to add and so for me for this um, sew along I will be doing view A and which is the shorter version and which will have the flounce and so this particular pattern that I picked up goes from a size 18W um, to a size 24W. And so if we go ahead and turn this on over to the back, you will notice that the, and let me let this focus in so you can see. For a 24, it is saying the bust is at a 46, the waist is at a 39, and the hip is at a 48. That is the body measurements. We will, in a moment, look at the finished garment measurements, which um, are listed on the pattern pieces. Couple things I want to note this should be a relatively easy sew along, as what I love about this are the grown on sleeves, so you don't have to worry about setting in any sleeves. And then you only have, have these pieces where the bodice is separate from the skirt pieces, and so which is really nice. You will have, um, because if you really like this, um, flat, the bodice part of this, you can actually add this bodice part onto any bottoms that you have. Say you want to add it to some pants for a jumpsuit or another type of skirt that you have um, or something like that. I think I really like that these pieces are separated. It's not all one piece. Um, but yeah, so here are the options again the line drawing the front for a the back for a b is the um here's the front for b the back for b and c um, are the longer sleeves i'm not doing the longer sleeves i will be doing the um, cap sleeves and so yeah should be relatively easy to put together and um so that is what you want to see for um 
as you're going through the um, the pattern and we will go over the um, finished garment measurements that's actually on the actual pattern pieces as opposed to here because you will notice it is different now when you um, grab your pattern you will notice the various pieces again I am doing view C and so you have your front, your back, which is cut on the fold. Um, then the skirt pieces are also cut on the front and back. Also, they, they are all separate pieces. So your front pieces um, and your back pieces are two separate pieces. You have the flounce piece. You also have that back facing piece. And of course, you have the ties. So here's the thing. If you have enough fabric, and sorry, this is looking a little crooked. If you have enough fabric for this flounce piece, the pattern calls for it only to be cut once, well, twice, because you have the flounce on both sides, right? But if you have enough fabric, go ahead and double cut. Um, and I do, I think I do have enough fabric. We'll see as, as I um, go through it, <laughs> but what you want is depending on the, your fabric and I'll show you mine here shortly but depending on your fabric how the wrong side looks you might not want that wrong side showing especially if it's a um, um, looks faded on the back or something like that but I'll show you what I'm saying here and so what we will do is double this up so underneath the flounce looks just like the right side of the fabric instead of the wrong side of the fabric we will also be french seaming so we will go through all of that as we are going through not a lot of pattern pieces at all i also highly suggest if you would like i am trace off your pattern pieces now here's the thing usually when i have patterns that have these larger pieces the skirt front skirt back I do not trace those I only trace um, the bodice piece so I will um, trace for the sew along um, just so you know the bodice front the bodice back I will trace the um, back facing piece I will trace the flounce um, I will not trace the ties I will not trace the skirt pieces the front or back um, but you can choose to trace or not to trace it is totally up to you so um, let me show you the fabric that I will be using Okay, so this is the beautiful fabric that I will be using. Um, this is actually the wrong side of the fabric. It's not terrible. I wanted to show you this. It's not terrible. This is the right side. Obviously, the colors are much more pronounced um, and vibrant. And this is the wrong side. It's not terrible. So if your fabric is like this, don't worry about... Um, doubling up the flounce you might just be perfectly fine with the wrong side um this showing again it's not terrible but it is obvious and i believe i have enough to um cut double the flounce if we go back to the pattern it does say for um um fabric requirements for view c and let me just point this out so you can see i wanted to grab this back so you can see for view c I will be going with the size 24. For view C, it says if you have at least 60 inch width fabric, you only need, and let me um, hold this up for you so you can see, three and three eighth inch fabric. So for me, I have this beautiful fabric, which I'll just show you here. This is my swatch book for anybody who follow me. You know, I keep just a notebook and when I, um, get fabric if it comes with the card like this one did I will just attach a swatch of the fabric to the card and tape or staple it into my notebook but at any rate for this one this is from so much fabric I bought it back in 2018 It's from so much fabric they no longer have it <laughs> but I will still link to the shop down below um, because she has beautiful high quality fabrics but at any rate this is an island tropical print in a rayon poplin kelly green it is 56 inches wide it's hundred percent viscose and I had purchased three and a half yards at $13 um, per yard so that is the fabric that I have chosen for this particular project and if you um, just so you know on the back of the envelope if we go back and visit the envelope here for fabrics you have a crepe a chali 
um, rayon, double Georgette, and um, are the fabric options. And then your notions, only thing you'll need, it says um, is the one in one fourth yard of wide uh, ribbon uh, for misses. I do have um, some ribbon already in my stash that I just plan to use. We will see if um, that should work um, out fine and you will need that ribbon it says for all views A, B, and C. So that is your fabric. That um, That's your notions that you'll need. And this is actually what I will be using um, for my dress. Now, one of the things I do want to point out, I did say I am tracing uh, my bodice. I will not show in this sew along how I trace my pattern pieces, um, only because I have a separate video on the methods that I use for tracing, and I will leave that in the I cards up above and leave a link to that down below as well. And so um, let's now move over to the pattern piece for the bodice. And um, I will show you the sizing that's on there compared to, again, the body measurements on here says for a size 24, which is the size I'm going for. It says a bust of 46, a waist of 39, and a hip of 48. Okay, so this is the front of the um, bodice front um, for the um, for the dress, and so you are cutting out two pieces, um, obviously. But the first thing I would highly recommend is definitely iron out all your pattern pieces so everything is nice and smooth and laid out. But here are the finished garment measurements for the bust. 49 inches and so for me this is the area that I'm most concerned about um, and so what I will do is actually um, sew up a muslin first for this bodice piece and I highly suggest that you do that if you think that you might need to make any adjustment I am not planning to grade up this pattern. Um, I do not grade up patterns. I rather just work with patterns that are within my size range, my measurements. And so what I am going to do is trace out the front, trace out the back only. That's where I'm starting at only. And I am going to just quickly, again, because it's grown on sleeves, it, um, it'll be fine. It'll should go relatively quick but I am going to um, trace out these two pattern pieces and just sew it up as is and then check the fit to see how it is fitting on me crossing fingers will not have to do a um, any type of bust adjustment here um, but we shall see and I will show you that uh, momentarily Okay, so here's the muslin. I put on a tank up underneath here. So if you do decide to do a muslin, make sure that you are wearing the bra that you believe that you will be wearing. Just don't wear your house bra or sports bra. <laughs> so at least you can get a, a better representation of how it would fit. So all I did was um, sew the front bodice pieces to the back bodice piece, which is the back bodice is cut on the fold. And I pinned where it would cross over and so, let me move this out of the way. Um, and so, you have to imagine this is where this, once these are crossed and stitched down, and you'll see that in the full sew along, this is where it's hitting at my waist. So, my weight is hitting pretty, pretty good. Um, I was going back and forth if I wanted to do a slight full bust adjustment to go so it closes more up at the top I would need to at least not very not even a lot but I am not for the main reason I'm looking at the flounce and the pattern it looks like that may help with um, some of the opening but at any rate usually for me it's just me, but I tend to like to wear um, something like a tank underneath 
that's one reason I'm not doing it. But the other reason is because as I lose weight, if I do this full bust adjustment now in a month, it's going to be too baggy up here. And so um, I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to, I think this, I think this looks good, especially because I do for me, just, I just feel comfortable always having something um, underneath wraps and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I want to show you what the back is looking like, as you can tell here, hitting at my waist. Um, I thought maybe I was going to have to make an adjustment, um, but I don't look like I do. And so, yeah, and I'm loving the room. This, this grown on sleeve just really makes this come together so easy. Um, so yeah. I am going to um, move forward and cut out all of my pattern pieces and I will show you everything that is cut out in a moment. Okay, before you um, begin cutting out all of your fabric, I just wanna show this um, method I'll be doing for my finishing of the back facing piece. Um, I believe I, if you watch my channel, you know I've shared this before that I learned from a different YouTuber tip stitch here on YouTube. So I'll just show you what I am going to do, which will give your edge a cleaner finish uh, with the back facing piece. And you can do this with the other facing pieces as well, but I figured it would be easier to show on this piece. So go ahead and cut out your um, interfacing, your woven interfacing. I have a black woven interfacing. And then go ahead and put your, this is your, obviously the main piece. Be delicate um, <laughs> with this uh, if you're using the same type of fabric because it can, it can stretch. Um, so what you wanna do is right side of the fabric, the facing up, and then you want to put the interfacing wrong side up. Let me make sure you can see that. Wrong side up and lay them on top of each other. And move this out of the way. And so what you're going to do is go ahead, pin all the way around the bottom edge because this is the this is the piece that's going to show on the inside of the garment go ahead and pin all the way around this way okay so what i've done is used um wonder clips only because this is a this is 100 percent viscose and it can grow on you or stretch a little bit so i just really want to be careful so what you want to do is now that you have this bottom edge all pinned or clipped together whichever you have done go ahead and sew this um, at 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around and again this is the the rough side of the interfacing facing up and the right side of the fabric facing up. Okay, as you can tell, I have sewn now here 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clip into the curve. Okay, everything has been clipped, as you can tell here. Everything is clipped into the curve. And so what you wanna do is take this over to your iron, and now the adhesive side of the interfacing will now, as normal, go against the wrong side of the fabric. And so what you're going to have is a very nice, clean, I'm gonna try to turn this inside out so you can see it, and get it as good as you can before you start pressing it um, down. But what you'll have is, and you can slightly roll and you'll see when you get to the iron, you can just ever so slightly, see that ever so slightly, roll that in ever so slightly. So you can see a peak of my um, fabric on the other side. But what you're going to do now is go ahead and iron your interfacing to the back facing piece. And then you only have um, that's the part that's going to attach to the neckline. And so, yeah, there you have it. And of course you have your other, um, 
facing pieces as well but you will do the exact same thing for those pieces um, also and this is what it looks like once it's all done so you have that very clean finish you don't have to worry about surging this edge or turning it under you may may if you would like to use bias binding tape as well as an option to get a nice clean finish for your back facing but i try to remember to do this every time i have uh, a pattern that has facing pieces um yeah it just makes for a really really clean finish and if your markings came off um like mine did just ever so slightly you if you can't see it go back get your pattern piece you know that this is the edge here right go back and just remark that so you know where your um your piece is so there you have it all right go ahead and do that to your other um pieces that call for interfacing and cut out your fabric okay um as you cut out your pattern pieces the last thing i do want to mention is because the pattern has you cut out all the skirt pieces um on a single layer make sure that you put a sticky tape or um washi tape um, and just mark the pattern piece so you know what piece is which and yeah at least that's what i do so stay tuned for part two and we will get to sewing <music>